So last week we had a look at the backwash of Extreme Rules, the dregs at the bottom of the can that even an alcoholic possum would turn its nose up at, and didn't we all have a fun time? We did. Shut up. Shut shut your mouth, we did. But this time around, let's look at the very best matches that have extremely ruled. It's hard to write lists, and I've written over a hundred of them for Ollie Bloody Davis at this point, and he won't let me stop. Most of these matches are stone cold classics and a stark reminder that even with a pay-per-view format that WWE's mostly ignored for the past decade, you can never fully write it off because almost every single year since its conception, there's been one absolute banger happening in Extreme Rules. I'm Adam Hailing from Parts Bar Known, and here are the 10 greatest Extreme Rules matches ever. And if you do want to hear us be mean or grumpy, or say, you know, swear a lot, because that normally happens in the bad ones, then check out last week's list. 10 worst Extreme Rules matches ever. <laughs> Some, there's a f in there. Number 10, Chris Jericho versus Rey Mysterio 2009. Many people correctly point to Chris Jericho's rivalry with Shawn Michaels as the best part of his late 2000s run, but what may be on a par with that level of y 2 excellence is Jericho's 09 feud with Rey Mysterio. Obsessed with Rey's mask and taking it from him, Jericho started his performance at Extreme Rules at the merch stand, cutting a great troglodyte filled promo, working his way through the crowd before beginning his no-holds-barred match for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, these might have been the two best wrestlers in WWE at the time, and they again showed why it was criminal they didn't get an extended rivalry over the Cruiserweight title in WCW. The match also peaked at the perfect moment as Jericho managed to masterfully rip Mysterio's mask off his face mid-619 and rolled him up to win in his final WWE IC title. It doesn't quite reach the levels of greatness of their highly underrated match at the Bash a month later, but if this was the second best match in their feud, probably means it was a pretty f great feud. Number nine, New Day versus Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan versus Heavy Machinery, 2019. In the, oh yeah, that was a pretty great match spot on this list, we have the excellent three-way SmackDown tag team title match from Extreme Rules 2019. WWE have been selective about when they want to care about their tag division, but for 14 minutes on this night, they cared, which is 14 minutes more than in 2020. You had a breakout performance from Heavy Machinery, whose run carried the middle of the match, with people getting genuinely behind them after the match started fairly tepid. You had Daniel Bryan being just the best goddamn best, getting to put his working shoes on against Xavier Woods and Big E, which led to an all-time great tag team finish with Big E shrugging off Bryan's kicks and slaps before catching him mid-backflip, you know, the one Bryan does, holding him on his shoulder while Bryan frantically tried to escape and E rushed to tag Woods and hit the midnight hour to win the match. It's a brilliant way to cap off a match that started cold but ended white hot. Number eight, Christian versus Alberto Del Rio, 2011. Why did WWE hate Christian so much? I know why Vince hated him. He thought he was ugly, so much so that he famously wanted to put a blue dot over Christian's face whenever he was on screen. Such a normal man he was. For one brief moment, however, it appeared that WWE was finally going to give Christian his flowers after carrying ECW's carcass to the finish line and being Edge's corner man at WrestleMania. At Extreme Rules 2011, Christian faced notable prick Alberto Del Rio for the vacant World Heavyweight Championship in a ladder match. I hear Christian is all right at them. As ladder matches go, this one is highly underrated. Arm-based ladder offense from Del Rio, fellow noted nutter Brodus Clay somehow getting absolutely busted open, and Christian finally winning his first WWE world title in a genuinely emotional moment, celebrating with the recently retired Edge, his best friend slash kind of brother. Maybe people don't talk about this one as much because Del Rio is in it. Maybe it's because this is 2011, meaning Michael Cole is waxing dickhead on commentary. Or maybe it's because WWE took this nice moment away just days later having Randy Orton dethrone Christian Cleed on SmackDown. Who's to say? But the match itself is a ladder classic, just like number seven, Jeff Hardy versus Edge. 2009. Another match featuring the slowly crumbling bodies of the men who revolutionized the match type a decade earlier, Jeff Hardy and Edge's 2009 rivalry came to a head in a ladder match over big gold. Considering we know now how bad Edge's neck was at the time, being less than two years out from his eventual nine-year retirement, it is insane the spots these two put on in this match. They do the inverse of the classic TLC2 spot with Jeff catching Edge with a twist of fate as Edge goes for a spear off a ladder. They both tumble through a ladder bridge with a landing that, shall we say, sucked. They just go so hard in a ladder match that, again, isn't talked about nearly enough these days. We even got a fantastic finish as well. As Edge reaches for his title, Hardy pulls his legs through the rung of the ladder, leaving Edge to only be able to look up helplessly as Jeff climbs the ladder, wins his gold. It's such a perfect bit of heel comeuppance that has yet to be done as well since. This match is also known as the precursor to CM Punk's second Money in the Bank cash-in, making Jeff's long-awaited celebration wait 
just a little bit longer. Number six, Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus 2012. Hey, look, it's the match they should have had at WrestleMania. But hey, if they had had that match at WrestleMania, would Daniel Bryan have got the groundswell of support he got for being so poorly booked, effectively starting the Yes Movement and his eventual rise to the top? Maybe not. So let's just be happy we got this match here at Extreme Rules. The match in question is a perfect example of how to do a good two out of three falls match in a way that doesn't make the first two falls completely arbitrary, rather than the typical formula of heel gets heat and also a pinfall, babyface makes his comeback and also a pinfall, then the real match starts and people wake up because the finish could now come at any point. This match uses the stipulation to its advantage. In a strategic play, Brian sacrifices the first fall of the match, losing by disqualification for kicking too much ass, to try and weaken Sheamus for the subsequent falls. He then immediately locks in the yes lock for a speedy second fall win, and then it was a battle for Sheamus to overcome his weakened state to get the best of the conniving Brian, which he did with one of the best bro kicks ever. This is a clinic and the highest point of Sheamus' run as World Heavyweight Champion, which otherwise blew a fairly significant fat one. 1500 fella. Number five, Samoa Joe versus Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins versus Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns, 2017, and a partridge in a pear tree. Now, we're really starting to get into the goodies of this list. If I'm being honest, any of the top five matches on this list could have taken the top spot. If they're your number one, won't argue with you. But this is my list, and this is the order. Please feel free to voice your displeasure at TempestWT on Twitter. Also, we have a fatal five way, and number five, and isn't that tidy from a little OCD brain. The year was 2017 and WWE needed to cement a new challenger for Universal Champion Brock Lesnar to face a great balls of fire and it, it's, it hasn't become less bizarre they called a pay-per-view that. Samoa Joe, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, Bray Wyatt, Roman Reigns were the top guys on Raw. That is a main event scene. Boys, everyone involved had a feasible shot at winning, which gave the match a level of unpredictability that you sometimes miss from WWE main events. There is so much to like in this match, be it the furthering of Seth and Bray's rivalry, or just the insane heat Roman was continuing to get after taking over The Undertaker's yard. WWE does multi-man main event matches exceptionally well, and this was one of the best examples of that, and also Samoa Joe won. Isn't that just peachy keen? Number four, The Shield vs. Evolution 2014. Everyone always knew The Shield was awesome. You got eyes, look at them top beef. But it wasn't until 2014 that the group started being allowed to properly get over with the audience as a babyface trio. Had a brilliant match with the Wyatt family at Elimination Chamber, an exhibition squash with Kane and the old age outlaws at WrestleMania sex letters, but then extreme rules happened. They ran head on into the three still active members of Evolution, a faction that hadn't had a real reunion in seven years. All of them never losers with a penchant for winning the wrong matches, and they got bodied. Evolution put the young certified future stars over clean as a sheet in one of the most fun trios matches in WWE history. Maybe the most fun trios match in WWE history, possibly second to their rematch of Payback, but that's only because of Blue Teaster. It was constant mayhem in the way that made the Shield work in the first place, capped off with a great dive from the Tron from Seth Rollins a month or so ahead of the dreaded Plan B. Number three, John Cena versus Brock Lesnar 2012. Had Brock Lesnar won this match, it would have been number one with a bullet. How could you be handed Brock Lesnar on a silver platter? Back from a successful run as UFC heavyweight champion and the biggest box office draw in combat sports for the last four years and have him lose in his first match back genuinely makes me crosser than a dad who's caught his d in the fridge. It didn't even make sense for John Cena to win. The, sto the story I thought the story coming out of WrestleMania was that he'd lost his groove because The Rock beat him and he wins this match? It's nonsense. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled positivity programming. The WWE main event style was very distinct around this time this match did not fit that style whatsoever. Brock Lesnar, being the madman that he is, busted Cena open hard way, hit a flying running knee that sent him ass over tea kettle over the top rope and could have killed him. And the match just had a feeling of danger and violence that had been completely absent from about 99% of matches during WWE's PG era. This wasn't polished and clean. It was a snuff film that felt like it could have ended at any time with Brock simply eating the heart out of Cena's chest until Cena wins lol. Of course. Number two, The Miz versus Cesaro versus Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens 2016. People bloody love this match. Most people have this match at number one. And to be honest, fair enough. A lot is said about The Miz bringing some prestige back to the IC title in 2016. And while that's only mostly true, if all of his title matches were at this level, 
it probably could have happened. This had all the fun of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn fight forever energy mixed in with Cesaro once again doing anything he could to just win a singles title in WWE while The Miz was trying to do everything he could to steal it away. This match might have had the best pinfall breakups of any WWE match with everyone waiting till the perfect moment to break things up and give fans reason to believe this is the finish time and time again. It was just so much fun to be had watching this match. Like most four ways, it follows the formula of guys taking turns for being dumped down a new man enters and rotate repeat but when the dudes involved are Cesaro, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, also Miz I suppose although to be fair his heelish antics are very funny in this match. You have a constant flow of excellent spots that never slows and builds anticipation for an eventual finish seeing Miz finally pick his spot just right and escape with the title. It would be the best match on most pay-per-views but not Extreme Rules 2016 turns out that would be number one, Roman Reigns versus AJ Styles 2016. There is a reason AJ Styles won most publications rest of the year award in 2016. It's because of matches like this. Roman Reigns was improving as a wrestler in 2016, but still not quite at the level that he would be a few years later. However, when he was given a top tier opponent, he could absolutely tear the house down. Thankfully for him, there may be no wrestler in the world better in 2016 than AJ Styles. Just prior to his heel turn, he was caught in the middle of the club's feud with the Usos, which spilled over into this extreme rules match, and everyone got involved. The gang's all here. Some say this match solidified AJ's place within WWE and in the eyes of Vince McMahon, having a blowaway match with the face of the company during a time where the WrestleMania 32 main event scene super didn't light the world on fire. If that's true, it is totally justified because AJ did everything in the world to make Roman Reigns look like an unstoppable world champion, complete with dudes coming off the top rope dudes being hit mid-air with ridiculous spears. Extreme Rules has had many fantastic matches over its decade plus history, but this one was phenomenally that is that to say it. I did. He's the I acted. And that's our list. What's your favorite Extreme Rules match? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video around if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to Parts of Unknown for more silly wrestling content. And never forget to jam that jam.